Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back, guys. Magic, this is Hunter and Shane. Say what up, Shane. What's up, nerds? We are back, taking a look at the bigger, the better, the better upgrade to Miracle Worker. That is right. This is a sequel to the $100 upgrade of Miracle Worker. If you guys have already seen that video, check the description down below. Check out what Shane did in that one. But this is a direct sequel. Isn't that right, Shane? That is correct. Okay. So before we get started, this is going to be a deck upgrade around Aminatu. I know you have a upgrade over on our Patreon of the Master of Keys. If you guys wanted to check out that upgrade, check the description for our Patreon link and consider subscribing. But Shane, like I said, this is Aminatu. Go ahead and talk to me about this deck and kind of just as a reminder of what the face commander does. Well, we're still going to be miracling. Aminatu is one, a white, a blue, and a black, or a 2-4 human wizard. It says at the beginning of your upkeep, surveil two, and then it says... Each enchantment card in your hand has Miracle. Its Miracle cost is equal to its mana cost reduced by four. So not only are we getting Miracle, we're getting a reduced Miracle. And her first ability is hopefully helping you stack the Miracle, plus all the other stuff we put in the deck. We're going to hopefully just be Miracling a lot of enchantments. Yeah, Amanatu feels like a pretty good value engine here. I mean, reducing your enchantment cards by four to make them cheaper is insane to me. Yeah, that's no joke. <laughs> All right, but before we get into your additions, Shane, let's hear a word from our sponsor. Hey, what's up, nerds? Today's video is sponsored by our good friends over at Evoke the Art, bespoke token series. If you're looking for another way to upgrade your decks, Evoke the Art's got you covered. Their complete set comes with 50 tokens, 45 of which are double-sided, offering a diverse range of artwork and utility. Head on over to zaximusstudios.etsy.com to pick up yours today. You can find the link in the description. Once again, huge thanks to Evoke the Art. Now let's get back to the video. All right, we are back. Uh, yeah, Shane, nice sponsor video. Let's, hey, what can I say? Let's go ahead and move on to these additions. Let's not keep the people waiting. What do we got? Well, this is a continuation from the 100. So on the screen right now, these are all the cards that I put in the 100. I loved them there. I still love them. They're coming on over. So put these cards in the upgrade. Perfect. So let's get on to the new ones. I see two Planeswalkers you're throwing in this time. Yes, sir. The first is Jace, the Mind Sculptor. Two and two blue. It's a Jace. Starting level two of three. He's got a plus two ability. Look at the top card of target player's library. You may put that card on the bottom of their library. He's got a zero ability. Draw three cards and put two cards from your hand on top of your library in any order. He's got a minus one ability. Return target creature to its owner's hand. He's got an alt at minus 12 that says exile all cards in target player's library. Then that player shuffles their hand into their library. We care about that zero. It's a free reusable brainstorm over and over and over and over. So we're just going to be hopefully stacking and miracling and stacking and miracling. And I mean, I guess you can also bounce stuff. You're probably never going to get to that ult, but this is a really good card. Yeah. Uh, just going ahead and just whatever is in your hand that you're like, okay, I want to miracle this away. You're just going to put that back on top of your deck and be like, oh my gosh, guess what I just drew? Miracle. Crazy. <laughs> I like it here. I'm also putting in Teferi, Master of Time. Two and two blue for a Teferi. Starting at three, he's got a static ability that says you may activate loyalty abilities of Teferi, Master of Time, on any player's turn, anytime you can cast an instant. He's got a plus ability, a plus one, draw a card, then discard a card. A minus three, target creature you don't control phases out. And a minus ten at an alt. Take two extra turns after this one. Now this card is drawing you tons of cards, and in EDH he activates an insane amount of times. So you will very much get to that ult if no one deals with this card extremely quickly. Yeah, and being able to activate on anybody's turn, that minus three to phase something out really protects your stuff too. Yeah, this is like an all-star in EDH. It really is. All right, that's all the Planeswalkers. Let's move on to the creature department. I see one here. I wanted to put in another legendary enchantment creature. So Erebos, God of the Dead, three and a black for a 5-7. Legendary enchantment creature god. It's got indestructible. It says, as long as your devotion to black is less than five, Erebos isn't a creature. It also says your opponents can't gain life. You could pay one and a black, pay two life, draw a card. Just another fantastic way to rip through your deck. And opponents not getting life is actually pretty relevant. I'm probably not going to be getting devotion to black that often in this deck, but if you do, having a five seven is also awesome. It's also a legendary enchantment creature, so it's Miracleable. The word is made up. Miracleable. I love it. It is miracleable. 
<laughs> Good include here. Yeah, your opponents can't gain life. That's just mean for anybody that's trying to play life gain. Um, and people get annoyed of it. I like it. Yep. I do see a sorcery that also is a miracle. Yeah, so our commander gives our enchantments miracle. But, I mean, there are a few cards in the deck out of the box with the miracle tag, or the miracle ability, I guess you could say. But I want to add up another one, and this one's awesome. Temporal Mastery. Five and two blue for a sorcery. Take an extra turn after this one. Exile Temporal Mastery with it a miracle cost of one and a blue. You would never want to hard cast this, obviously. But an extra turn for only two mana is insane. It's, I, I love this card. Yeah, Temporal Mastery is one of the better miracle spells they've ever printed, in my opinion. So mm -hmm. we'll see it included here. Yep. Uh, one instant. You would be shocked. I'm typically not the tutor guy of the group. I'm not really a big fan of tutors, but this actually goes insane in the deck. Vampiric Tutor, one black mana, instant. Search your library for a card, then shuffle your library, put that card on top of it, you lose two life. So for two life and one mana, you can instant speed grab the best thing in your deck that you will hopefully miracle. Hopefully it's an enchantment. But I just couldn't pass up the ability to go get something and then play it immediately for cheap. Yeah, on that opponent's end step, you're going to be like, okay, in response to you ending your turn, I'm going to be yeah. a Vampiric Tutor and find something amazing. And then, oh my gosh, who would have thunk? A <laughs> miracle. <laughs> and even if you don't, at the end of your opponent's turn, let's say you forgot to leave up that one mana, you can hold priority before you draw two. So it's, it's really true. flexible. It's true. Uh, and, uh, once again, just one more artifact. It was alluded to in the 100 by Steven. I threw in scroll rack and with a bigger budget, I also wanted to throw in Sensei's Divining Top. So for one mana, it's an artifact. It has an ability that you could pay one, look at the top three cards, of your library, then put them back in any order. You could tap it, draw a card, then put Sensei's Divining Top on top of your library. Just another fantastic way to look at the top, stack it properly, or just draw, flip it. Put it on top of your library. Like this card is really good in miracle decks, dude. Yeah, just kind of any top deck manipulation is insane in this deck. And yep. since his divine top might be the best one in the whole format. So that's the goal. Easy and clue. But you are a miracle deck that it miracles in enchantments. I see some more enchantments you're throwing in. Yep. I threw some really mean ones in the one hundred. And I just kind of wanted to keep that train going. The first one I guess isn't super mean, but I didn't even know about this card until I started reading the comments from the $100 video. And that's Penance. For two and a white, it's an enchantment. Choose a card from your hand and put that card on top of your library. Prevent all damage from a black or red source. So the putting the card on top of the library is what you have to pay to get that other part, which is nuts. So you can just add, whenever you want, put a card from your hand on top of your library, which is exactly what a Miracle deck wants. Like, I didn't, I had no idea about this card, but... It's fantastic. It really is, man. Instant speed doing that. You could be like, okay, in response to me drawing, I will instant speed one of these many cards that I drew. That's an enchantment that I just want a miracle for cheaper. Boom. Yep. And I mean, I guess you can prevent some damage. That's not hmm. nothing. But I mean, that's just a byproduct of doing something very strong in the deck. Yeah. I mean, black and red are damage central. So that could it's be true. viable in the game. It's true. This next enchantment I'm putting in is half of a very mean and strong combo. Just right off the bat, I don't have the other half of there, so there's no combo in it. But Exquisite Blood is going in my deck. For four and a black, it's an enchantment. Whenever an opponent loses life, you gain that much life. We are not a life gain deck, so if you have Sanguine Bot on the field without this, it's not going to do anything in the deck. But Exquisite Blood, however, will 100% do something on the field by itself. So that's why I'm putting it in there. Whenever anyone takes damage, you're gaining life. That's from combat. That's from anything. I really like this card, even by itself. Yeah, even those lands that they might tap that are the pain lands. You gain life off of their pain lands. Yeah. So we're not a life gain deck, but this card kind of makes us a life gain deck. But I know, it's kind of cool. I'm also putting in one of the virtues. I really like this virtue. Virtue of Persistence. It is an adventure. So its adventure is Lock the Wayne Scorn. One in a black sorcery. Target creature gets minus three, minus three till on the turn. You gain two life. And then you can pay five and two black at the beginning of your upkeep. Put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Now, I know I just said we're not a life gain deck. 
and then the very next card says gain life. That's just kind of unfortunate, but it's you know, nothing to scoff at. Minus three, minus three. Might get rid of a mana dork or something. But we really just care about that enchantment, man. Every upkeep, being able to grab the biggest creature in anyone's graveyard, put it on the battlefield, that's strong. And any chance I can get to play this card, I do. Yeah, especially if you could just... I mean, who cares about the adventure part at that point? If you miracle this card for three yep. mana, throw it onto the field, mm -hmm. I would do that. Yep. I would do that too. <laughs> this coming out that early would be nuts. Yeah, that's... uh. Definitely a problem moving forward for a lot of people. <laughs> and finally, you touched the mana base just a little bit. I see some lands. <laughs> I touched it just a little bit. You're right. For the 100, I didn't really add any lands. I added one, Dog of Oslayer, which is unlike me. I typically add some if I'm able to. But I had a little bit extra budget and a little bit extra room. And I threw in all the shocks and all the bonds. I love these cards. The shocks are Godless Shrine, Hollowed Fountain, and Watery Grave. They all enter the battlefield tapped unless you pay two life, which is pretty, like, underwhelming, whatever. And it's just fast mana. They tap for the respective colors. Godless Shrine is a white and a black. Hollowed Fountain, white and a blue. And Watery Grave is a blue and a black. Really good cards. Speaking of really good lands, the Bond lands, the EDH lands, I put them in as well. Morphic Pool, Sea of Clouds, Cha Vault of Champions. They're all fantastic cards. They enter the battlefield tapped unless you have two or more opponents. And then they tap for their respective colors again. Morphic Pool is a blue and a black. Sea of Clouds is a white and a blue, and Vault of Champions, white and a black. Those just come in all EDH decks. They don't yet, but they might one day. But this whole suite of cards, I think, is just it's important for upgrades. The pre-cons normally come with very slow lands, and if you can afford it, and if you have them lying around, this will just make the pre-con or just your deck function so much better. Yeah, couldn't agree more. I love all these land additions. Uh, fast mana is the best mana. It's true. It really is. All right, Shane, is that going to be all of the additions? That is. That's my 300. Awesome. Well, it's time to make room for all of those things. Let's go ahead and kick it off with these cuts, Shane. What are we cutting out? Just like the beginning, I brought over the $100 additions, bringing over the $100 cuts. Everything on screen is what I cut from the $100 video. If you want to see why I cut them, the link will be in the description. But let's just say I didn't like them there. Still don't like them now. We're cutting them. Get them gone. All right. So let's cut these new cards out of here. I see some creatures. Yeah. We're cutting some. Well, the first one's just a big creature. Arvanox, the Mind Flail. Four and three black. It's a 9-9 nine -nine horror legendary enchantment creature. It says it isn't a creature unless you control three or more permanents you don't own. At the beginning of your end step, exile the bottom card of each opponent library face down. For as long as those cards remain exiled, you may look at them. You may cast permanent spells from among them and you may spend mana as if it was any color to cast those spells it's a lot going on here it's a nine nine it's kind of slow it's not really miracling i get you can miracle it but it's going to be some clunky pattern of like give me your bottom cards and then i'll slowly get them and then i'll cast them and then this is going to be a creep like i don't know if you like this that's cool but i i wasn't a fan of it so i cut it yeah this card was originally printed when they first did Universe Beyond, this was from Stranger Things. Yeah. And then they did this version of it and put it in the list. And this is its first reprint in an actual kind of product, I guess. Yeah. Which, I cool. can't, while you're getting rid of it, it doesn't really <laughs> fit here. I mean, yeah, it's a cool creature. And if you want it, keep it. But maybe just don't keep it in the deck. Mm -hmm. I'm also cutting Nightmare Shepherd. Two and two black for a 4-4 demon. Jamming creature. Got flying. It says whenever a non-token creature you control dies, you may exile it. If you do, create a token that's a copy of that creature. Except it's a 1-1, one, one, and it's a nightmare to control other types. That's cool. It'll kind of, you know, if your creature dies and it's not a token, you'll get the token. Uh, I just don't really like it. It's kind of eh. And we're more focused on enchantments. I get this as an enchantment creature, but we have some bigger, cooler enchantments that I care about. So I had to cut them to make room. Yeah, we saw the virtue you added that it can bring stuff back from the grave. So if it was anything to die, including your own stuff, it just gets exiled so you can never bring it back. We don't uh, like that. This is a good cut. Plus, our backward commander still on the deck and he gives everything escape, so we don't want things exiled. Yeah, this guy defeats that purpose. The next one I'm cutting is Phenomenon Investigators. Two, a blue and a black for a 3-4 human detective. It says, as it enters, choose Believe or Doubt. Believe says, whenever a non-token creature you control dies, 
Create a 2-2 black horror enchantment creature token. Or Doubt says, at the beginning of your end step, you may return a non-land permanent you own to your hand. If you do, draw a card. I don't... I mean, card draw is cool and all, but you're, like, bouncing something on that part of it, and then just creating a token again, like... I don't know. This card just seems, seems kind of lackluster, in my opinion. Yeah, a little bit boring, if you will. Yeah. And then the last creature I'm cutting is Solemn Simulacrum. Four mana for a 2-2 two -two golem. When it enters, you may search your library for a basic land card, put that card onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle. And when it dies, you draw a card. Everyone knows Sad Robot. Everyone probably knows that Sad Robot's a very pre-conny card. I cut it. Made room for something better. Yeah, Sad Robot. It's sad that he's getting cut out of this deck, but <laughs> like you said, it's one of those cards that are easy to cut. Moving on, I see one sorcery that you're removing. Yeah, it's a big one. Amanatu's Augury. Six and two blue for a sorcery. Exile the top eight cards of your library. You may put a land card from among them onto the battlefield. Until end of turn, for each non-land card type, you may cast a spell of that type from among the exiled cards without paying it's mana cost. Now that can seem like it would be pretty cool. Spend a bunch of mana up front, then get stuff for free, but it's just kind of clunky, and you're at the... You could potentially whiff. You could not get anything great. And it's not really doing the miracle thing. It's kind of weird. Yeah, you can't miracle this away, so this is always going to cost you kind of eight mana. And that is a hefty price, especially if you could just, like, whiff, and you get just, like, maybe two different card types. You're just like, yeah. oh, cool, I spent eight mana on two one-drops. <laughs> yep. All right, but it looks like uh, I see mm, three instants. Yep. I don't like these. They're kind of inefficient, and I needed to get them out. The first one is Utter End. Two and a white and a black for an instant. Exile target non-land permanent. That's it. I just don't like that rate. It's kind of expensive for what it does, so I cut it. Yeah, it is an expensive rate for sure. Same goes for Return to Dust. Two and two white, instant. Exile target, artifact, or enchantment. If you cast this spell during your main phase, you may exile up to one other target, artifact, or enchantment. I, I don't think we really need that much artifact and enchantment removal. And casting this on your main phase, I get it. But it's an instant, so it's like, you could just do that for slow sorcery speed. I don't know. I just don't like this card either. I don't think it's needed in the deck. It's just It might be in the deck for other reasons, like, if you're battling against one of the other decks in the pod, but I didn't want to keep cards just specific for like this pod. And then the last one I'm getting rid of is Thirst for Meaning. Two and a blue, instant. Draw three cards, then discard two cards unless you discard an enchantment card. That would be cool for the backup commander because the backup commander has the escape cost, so it's like cool. Discard an enchantment, play an enchantment. Uh, but again, I just don't know if I like this card that much. I get that it's card draw, but there's much better card draw in this deck. That is like constant card draw. You saw me add some stuff that you can utilize over and over and over. This is just a one-time effect. So I cut it to make room. As a deck that cares deeply about enchantments, having a card that says it's more beneficial to discard an enchantment doesn't seem good in this deck. Yeah, I get the incentive is to like keep more cards in your hand so you discard one. But like I said, I added a lot of card draw in like utilizing more like over and over and over, not just one time. Mm-hmm. And you are an enchantment deck, but we are removing one enchantment. Yeah, cast out. I don't really like this card. Three and a white enchantment with flash. When it enters, exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls until cast out leaves the battlefield. Got a cycling for one white. This is just like not actually removal. You remove this, then they remove this, then they get that back. It's always pretty much that way, unless you have a way to protect your enchantments. I don't know. This is just not good removal. Yeah, this removal is weird. Uh, I, I've never really liked those that are like until it leaves the battlefield kind of effects because most of the time it's just you're incentivized to get hit because you took their thing yeah. and they want and it and it's just, it's just not actually gone <laughs> it's not gone it's just sleeping it's cast out and finally I know you added six lands I see six lands you are removing yes we're just straight six for six here the first I'm cutting is Demir Aqueduct it is the bounce land it enters tapped. And when it does, you got to pick up a land. It can tap for a blue and a black. I'm also cutting Evolving Wilds. It is a land that you can tap, sacrifice, 
Search your library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield, tap it, then shuffle. And then similarly, Terramorphic Expanse. It's a land that does the exact same thing. You can tap it, sacrifice it, search for basic land, put it on battlefield, tapped. These are all pre-conny lands to me. I mean, the Aqueduct I get is kind of like giving you more mana, but at the cost of tempo, having to pick something up sucks. And we don't really want to be pitching something in the graveyard. That'd be the only time I want to play this card. If I like want to put something in the graveyard. And so I don't like it. It's slow. Yeah, and you added uh, fast lands. So fast. Evolving Wilds and Terramorphic Expanse. I'd rather have a land that can either tap for two colors rather than going to find one color. And speaking of fast lands that for two colors, I got rid of all the Thrivings. The so Thriving Heath, Thriving Isle, and Thriving Moor. I don't like these cards. They enter the battlefield tapped always. You can choose a color other than the one that's on them, and then it'll tap for that. Uh, the Heath is white, Isle is blue, Moor is black. It's a good budget version, but like, why play with these when you can play with ones that will just come in untapped and do the same thing? And you don't have to keep track of like the color you pick. I don't. I was gonna I say, know. you hate keeping track of stuff. I hate keeping track of stuff. <laughs> Easy to swap out with the other lands you added. Yep. But is that it, Shane? Is that entire upgrade to Amanatu three hundred dollars? That'll do it. Okay, you know the question I'm about to ask. We've given you $300 to upgrade this entire deck. What was the total amount of money that you spent on these additions? I saved the people some money. If mm-hmm. you took the $100 additions and these new ones I just showed, it'll come up to $291. Wow, so, you, you are saving people money. Nine bucks. Go ahead and get nine bucks. another card that you really wanted. There or, you go. Hey, if you opened up a card from Duskmorn, just throw that in there. Exactly. But cool. You have any final thoughts before we wrap things up about Amato? I think she's going to be an awesome miracle deck, man. The fact that stapled on her, she helps you surveil like that, I think is really important. So it's like you're setting up your miracle. I think she's going to be reliably miracling. I think she's going to have a downfall of, you know, like a lot of decks. They get crushed by any kind of board wipes. That's going to be the thing here, too, obviously. It's going to be like a slow build up, and then you're going to get wiped. And you're going to be kind of bummed, but <laughs> I think it'll be fun. Yeah, I'm kind of terrified to play against this because Miracle seems too good in my opinion. But hey, you're a miracle worker. Hey, it's a miracle. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you guys like this video, hit that like button. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already so you're staying up to date with all the other upgrades and all the other videos that we're coming out with all the time. If you wanted to see this entire deck list in its entirety, well, check the description for that link to the Moxfield account. Play test it yourself. While you're down in the description, you'll find links to all of our social media accounts. That's TikTok, that's Twitter, that's Instagram. And it's at guys at magic for each one on those. Comment down below. Did you guys agree with this upgrade? Maybe Shane missed an ad that you felt that was really important. Let them know. Comment down below. Also on the screen right now, those are all of our Patreon subscribers. That is right. If you guys wanted to check out what they are seeing, which is not here on YouTube, including the backup, that's the Master of Keys upgrade. It's over exclusive on our Patreon. Check the link in the description as well, and also consider subscribing. And until the next video, hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Peace. Bye-bye.